Hello, today I'm in North London at the offices of Provenance to speak to Jesse Baker and Yalta Steiner, who are the co-founders of this exciting startup. Provenance is a platform to build transparent supply chains and they are using Ethereum's technology to give suppliers and consumers information they can trust about the products. Thanks for having us. So firstly, could you tell us a little bit about yourself, how you came to work together and how you came up with the idea behind Provenance? Sure. Sure. Um, so I'm Jessie Baker. Uh, my background's in manufacturing engineering. So um, I've been looking at how we might create more tr transparent supply chains for almost a decade, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, and started Provenance um, a few years ago um, to try and think of a, a, a grassroots approach to supply chain transparency. Um, we started building a network and then I met Yetta, mm. and uh, we kind of we met in the queue at a um, a small Internet of Things conference in Berlin, oh. and uh, both were pretty keen on the blockchain. Started talking about provenance on the blockchain, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and then how did you decide to create provenance on Ethereum? On Ethereum, yes. Um, well, for me, it was like a a kind of the, the lost key mm -hmm. to fit the lock. <laughs> like uh, a big challenge with supply chain transparency is um, it's very difficult to create end-to-end -end supply chain mm -hmm. transparency without compromising, uh, well, revealing the identity and perhaps compromising um, what happens within the supply chain itself. Mm -hmm. um, and the method I was using, um, and we still use it, Provenance, around forming a network and using um, a more participatory social mm -hmm. experience works if you want to be 100% transparent, but the blockchain allows us to uh, kind of take that to a yes. next level. Yeah. yeah, yeah. so it was quite an exciting time when we both met last mm -hmm. May, so I came across Ethereum and Provenance basically at the same time where I was still working as a consultant. I worked on um, on circular economy, mm -hmm. so the way how to share and reuse products, um, components, materials, and um, yeah. Then Can you tell us a little bit about circular economics? What is exactly and? Yeah, so the idea is basically, I mean, the way how we currently produce and manufacture is mm -hmm. quite a linear way. So mm -hmm. we extract materials, um, create products, use them and dispose of them. Mm -hmm. um, while wasting enormous material value and, and effort that's been put into the products. So the idea is basically to close the loop and, and kind of reuse, um, reuse the materials. Um, and it's really difficult to, to track um, products and, and feed them back into the loop. So that's one thing we would like to achieve using the blockchain, so securely tracing, tracking mm -hmm. materials. So, yeah. And can you exactly explain what you aim to achieve with provenance? What's your objective? Um, yeah, I mean, so there's a large social mission mm -hmm. behind provenance. In fact, it's set up as a social enterprise. Mm -hmm. um, and really, it's designed to empower all kinds of actors along uh, product life cycles to create a more transparent system for everybody. Um, and really why we're aiming for transparency. Um, there are lots of reasons, but the main one is around trying to um, reduce exploitation mm. within supply chains of, of, lots of lots of types of exploitation from um, social and societal impacts that, that, that um, supply chains have to environmental devastation, I guess. So really our, our kind of grand remit is around addressing that problem. And, um, and kind of in an interesting way, so in a positive way by yeah. helping companies mm. to shine that actually use good business practices. Exactly, yeah. We're trying to build like cutting edge, pioneering tools for the good guys. Yeah, the people that want to have a more transparent approach because um, they've got little to hide. Okay. So what's the difference between your project and other projects concerned with ethical sourced products? What's the main difference? Um, well, there are quite a few projects in this area. Quite a lot of them are the brands themselves, mm -hmm. or they are retailers who are looking to um, 
be more transparent about the products they sell. In fact, just this year, we've seen quite a few new initiatives. Even Amazon has got an initiative to help open up the supply chains on a couple of their product lines. So that was kind of <laughs> interesting. Um, but Provenance doesn't sell any products, and we don't intend to ever uh, be a retailer of goods. So um, what's important to us is, is brokering the information and being um, a way that information can flow uh, to consumers and through different stakeholders and supply chains. So that's quite a big difference. Um, and how have you found building on Ethereum? Yeah, that was basically, I mean, in some ways it was a lucky coincidence. So I came across mm -hmm. um, the two projects basically at the same moment. So Jesse had already been thinking about using the blockchain um, kind of this, um, the, the, the opportunity for, for tracking things immutably on the blockchain. Um, yeah, and then I heard about a talk um, in Berlin in May, and so, yeah, that, that luckily happened yeah, at happened. the same time. Okay. And can people contribute to the project in any way? There is so many ways. ways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> We're definitely... It, um, so although Provenance as a company has is, is been around for a little while, I mean, you know, more than a year, um, the work we're doing with Ethereum and, and the DAP is, is kind of uh, still pretty early days. So we're, we're really interested to find um, partners that might be keen to pilot this, particularly um, companies that are uh, independent and, and have a supply chain that perhaps is a bit more complex. Um, but then, yeah, we're looking for all kinds of people to get involved, uh, developers. Developers, yeah, who, who are interested in designing smart contracts, how to make this work in the legal system when it comes down to transactions and, and things should be accepted as an actual transaction that has taken place. Definitely. Yeah. There's a lot of work we're doing around um, physical tagging as well of goods because it's all very well having um, digital incidences of products existing and being linked to the blockchain but we're talking about f real physical material things so um, a lot of the kind of experiments and design work we're doing is looking at RFID and NFC and lots of ways that we can link uh, physical physical things to to provenance so directly yeah okay and I understand you have received funding from the EU when you were here government yeah was this helpful how what what happened was like a big change for your your company yeah that was actually pretty yeah, e yeah. exciting I mean it was really exciting. basically <laughs> the starting point for our work so we had, had been working on an article and then started working on these proposals yeah um, yeah we got money granted both by the European Union and the UK government which will basically yeah. enable us to, to build mm -hmm. what we are aiming for it's yeah. nice to know that other people think it's a good idea yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. can you give us an example how you can use a blockchain in a company in the supply chain exactly yeah of course. So one thing that we've been talking about, and it's probably a really tangible example, is bicycles, like where people would be interested in what exactly is the grade of the steel that's been used, what's what's the kind of paint, what's the impact of the paint on the um, on the environment. That could be data, um, metadata that people would like to additionally commit to the blockchain, or any type of services that then are done during the life cycle of the bike. So if you brought that bike back to the manufacturer for getting a wheel exchange or things like that, and then you want to sell further onwards that bicycle, that's kind of important information to have and would increase and show the true value of the product. So these are kind of data you would like to track. Right, right. So the exciting thing about this is um, before uh, the invention of Ethereum and the blockchain, um, if you wanted to make that supply chain transparent, you would have to reveal the identity of every single person along a supply chain, along with the accompanying data that could support what grade the steel was, where the paint had come from, the environmental impact. But now we can allow for some um, pseudo-anonymous information. So perhaps you can see the grade of the steel without having to reveal the the mine or the steel works and necessarily. And still, still maintaining mm -hmm. the whole continuity, yeah. the yeah. whole chain throughout the life cycle. And the company is still competitive because they don't have to reveal everything exactly. about mm -hmm. yeah. how they produce stuff. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense for all the actors in so the supply chain. Um, yeah, you, 
you aren't reducing people's competitive advantage at any step. Are you building any physical technologies around uh, provenance, something like an hardware? Yeah, we are. Um, so an important part of this is connecting physical things and materials to the blockchain. So we've been investigating lots of different tagging methods um, from some quite lo-fi tagging mm -hmm. methods like chemical tagging and even just etching and engraving um, so that we can give things unique identities. But then also we've been looking at digital tags, so chips and also RFID and NFC, uh, which is radio frequency identification. And it allows you to, quite a few phones have got um, NFC capability now, so you can just touch your phone on the yeah. tag and Finger, yeah. find out exactly. So thanks for being with us, Jesse and Yatta. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for watching us. Please subscribe to our channel and follow us on Twitter for the latest news on Ethereum.